Well, hello, my name is Jonathan Lau, and I am going to be presenting this evening on uh, ozone therapy, which we at O3Vets obviously feel is a very critical tool for the veterinarian. Um, before we get going here, I just want to mention a couple of things. Um, first of all, uh, we will have a giveaway um, or a, uh, a coupon for you at the end of, of this presentation. So if you stick around, um, you're going to benefit. Um, so that's the first thing. Secondly, we'll have a time for questions um, at the very end as well. So stick around for that as well. Um, but let's jump right into it uh, this evening. So, okay, um, coming to you live here from Michigan. Um, yeah, it's beautiful right now. Uh, first of all, I just want to, to mention that we exist to make alternatives the first choice. Uh, we've seen the great benefit of ozone therapy, but many other similar therapies that have just a phenomenal uh, result in the patient without the side effects that you often get um, with some of the traditional therapeutic re regimens. So um, we think that uh, many of these alternatives should be a first choice, a first line. Uh, because of that, we're committed to helping veterinarians both develop and use alternative treatments that are effective and safe, uh, but for some reason or another might be marginalized by mainstream medicine. Um, very briefly here, before I get into the meat of where we're going, let's just go over where we're going to go. Um, first, I'm going to just briefly share a couple slides on what ozone is. Um, then we'll go into the medical ozone's history and the current state of medical ozone. Um, after that, we'll get into the actual effects of medical ozone, so how its effect on the body. Um, and then methods of application, it's a very versatile therapy, um, and there's a lot of different ways it can be applied, so we'll jump into that a little bit. Uh, we'll have a couple of case studies because those are always interesting, and, and then I'll show you uh, some of the equipment that's used. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, go through this and, and uh, get you uh, some information on ozone here. So first of all, what is it? Well, as you can see in our little graphic here, um, ozone is a, it's, it's, it's a molecule that has been energized. Uh, it's unstable and it's a form of oxygen. So if you look at our uh, graphic, you see a bolt of lightning. Uh, well, either a bolt of lightning or a high voltage source of some sort is needed to produce ozone. That's one of the ways to produce ozone. Um, if we pass that through oxygen, what will happen is we will split those oxygen molecules, which are uh, typically uh, bonded uh, two molecules together, um, that's O2, uh, but as the electricity passes through, it'll split those apart. And what will happen is you'll get uh, molecules that very rapidly form, uh, come back to form O2. Very small uh, minority of those molecules will form a, a triad of ozone molecules. So you have what's called O3 or ozone as it's known. It's, it's basically just uh, oxygen on steroids. Um, so, so that's what it is. It's three oxygen atoms and they're sharing electron, electrons. The uh, problem is they don't share very well, um, which makes it very unstable, which in our case is actually what makes it uh, one of the most powerful sterilizers in the world. It's uh, highly oxidative, and so we get um, some benefit from that actually. It's uh, got a very short half-life, which is, again, makes it, is because it's very reactive, uh, makes it hard to transport or to store, um, almost impossible. So I have a couple true-false questions for you here. Let's see if, if you can answer those. Um, first of all, uh, what, uh, yeah, actually, is ozone used to, uh, by municipalities to treat water in place of chlorine? Uh, is, that, is that true or false? Oh, well, that is actually true. It's used all over the world, especially in Europe, you'll find, um, to treat water. Um, 
Ozone was discovered in 1785. What do you think about that one? Yep, that is actually true as well. So we have a couple of true statements there. Ozone is orderless. Yeah, that's false. Actually, ozone has pretty peculiar smell. Um, unfortunately, I can't demonstrate that for you right now. The computer can do amazing things, but that's not one of them, uh, is smell. So, uh, and ozone can be a harmful lung irritant. Although that says false, it is actually true. Um, <laughs> I have to make the change there. It, it can be um, a harmful lung irritant. Uh, so you do need to be careful how it's administered. Um, and let's just run through the history real quick. Actually, ozone was, as we saw, discovered in 1785. It was synthesized, so we found out a lot more about it and put it down in writing in 1840. Uh, 1857, the first generator was crafted um, for ozone therapy. And as we moved on, we discovered the ability of ozone to actually eliminate microorganisms. Uh, so that's... Uh, one of the great benefits of ozone. In 1885, the first textbook on medical applications um, was produced, and so it began the, the long history of medical use. Um, and then in 1957, a guy by the name of uh, Hansler, was his last name, built the first modern ozone generator. Interestingly enough, the first generator crafted in 1857 was actually crafted by a guy named Tesla, um, who's a pretty well-known individual these days. Um, so what is the state of ozone today in the world? Well, ozone is regulated as a medical treatment in uh, at least four company, countries that I know of. Uh, I've heard that it's regulated in up to 13 countries. Um, I can't verify that, uh, but very at the very least in four and um, most likely in a number of other countries as well. But it's commonly practiced in many, many other countries. So around the world, um, you'll find ozone is used in clinics and hospitals everywhere basically anywhere you find people. Uh, today, there's over 40 ozone organizations, um, places like Japan and the United States and Brazil and Spain and Cuba and Mexico, lots of different uh, countries, Germany and Russia, practice ozone and have organizations that are formed around this, this therapy. Um, there's over 26,000 ozone practitioners. That's a, a very conservative estimate. And there's hundreds of medical studies. So we really do know a lot about ozone. Um, and in fact, there's there's been a number of major works that have been published on ozone. There's this one, which is the Madrid Declaration on Ozone Therapy, which is really a good um, guide for ozone practitioners. And it, at the bottom there, you see it says, towards a united approach to the practice of ozone therapy worldwide. That's really their goal, to get ozone therapy to be something that's... Uh, um, used worldwide and, and used correctly. Uh, there's also uh, practice, ozone therapy and practice, a, a manual from Russia um, that's available. And then we have a number of works, uh, books and articles and studies written by a guy named Velio Vacci, who is Italian um, and just devoted a lot of his life to making ozone um, uh, really what it is today in, in medicine. Uh, there's a couple other key works. One comes from Germany. It's called the Low-Dose Ozone Concept, and that's guidelines and treatment strategies. Very helpful. And then this is the newest one that I've come across, the World Federated Federation of Ozone Therapy. It's a review of evidence-based ozone therapy. And you get about 50 pages worth of uh, references um, in this one. So there's lots and lots of references there to studies. And then last but not least, um, the Veterinary Ozone Treatment Guide. This is just something that we've put out recently to help um, guide veterinarians and the use of ozone therapy. It's very short and to the point. So, so uh, it's, it's helpful, though, we think, for, for the vets. Um, Studies, man. Uh, there's lots of studies, and I just want you to know they're out there. We can, po I can point you to a site if you have interest. Uh, write me after this webinar, and I can send you some links. 
um, on where to go. But this one's on using ozonated oil in the treatment of dermatitis. Um, there's there's a lot of uh, vets and humans alike that are using um, ozone therapy to treat uh, spinal injuries, um, herniated discs, uh, sports injuries in the knees and elbows, arthritis uh, in the fingers, lots of different um, injection type for the treatment of those types of things and it's uh, pretty fan uh, fascinating to see the results of ozone therapy. This uh, type of skin infection or non-healing wound um, is a, a, pr a prime candidate for limb bagging, uh, which is one of the methods of administration where we actually run ozone gas right over the surface of a wound. Um, so there's studies on that. Uh, actually, for intermammary application of ozone therapy and in, in for mastitis in dairy cows um, has been had some really good results there um, treating those in infections so uh, we could run through this list and and see the herniated discs and the treatment in lung injury and septic rats so um, some lab type of studies in here as well um, with carcinomas for for rabbits um, and uh, then uh, retain placentas in dairy cows. So it runs, it really runs the gamut, you'll see. Um, so I just want you to know those studies are out there again. I think it's important and helpful at times. Um, the second thing, uh, I guess, section that I'd like to go into here now is, is just ozone's effect on the body. Um, as we think of the key ingredients for a healthy life, uh, there's a number of them we could point to, um, but we believe that oxygen is right there at the top of that list. Uh, let me ask you to do a simple exercise here. So what I'd like you to do is to stop and to uh, take a deep breath and then to hold your breath. So very few of us can even hold our breath for more than a minute. Um, but if I were to ask you to hold your breath for two, three, four minutes, you, you can do it. Uh, we need oxygen. It's vital to our survival. Uh, water is uh, another one. Nutrition, obviously, and sleep, and uh, exercise. So those are the ones I, I put on here. Um, these things are vital, but we put oxygen up there at the top. Uh, oxygen utilization, says Dr. Schellenberger, is, appears to be the most the single most important determinant of health, aging, and degenerative disease. And Dr. Schallenberger is a well-respected author, clinician, and uh, ozone trainer in uh, um, the Nevada. Um, and, and he says this in his book, through a complex of chemical process, uh, complex chemical process, ozone is able to stimulate oxygen utilization which in turn stimulates the synthesis of antioxidant buffering enzymes. So those enzymes are, is a little bit counterintuitive because I've been asked the question many times, doesn't ozone therapy produce um, free radicals? And the, the answer is yes, it will produce a small amount of free radicals, just as um, exercise uh, would produce free radicals. But in the long one run, what ozone is doing is it's actually stimulating the synthesis of an antioxidant buffering enzymes. So it's helping to eradicate free radicals uh, really from the body. Um, so it's an amazing uh, paradox there. Um, decreased oxygen utilization that creates what's called uh, functional hypoxia, which is basically accelerates free radical formation. Uh, it exhausts that antioxidant oxidant buffering capacity that we were just talking about. Um, and that obviously leads to the mitochondria deteriorating. Um, and and it, that's a dangerous situation. I mean, it's, it's happening to all of us. But we want to slow that down, that mitochondrial decay that happens. Um, and if we can help do that in any way possible, we're going to live longer and we're going to stay healthier. Um, so 
one thing that's important to understand and is how is how our bodies and how this these mitochondria are are decaying. Well, you know, oxygen utilization is the same thing as your NAD NADH ratio, um, and the rate of decay is determined by that NAD NADH ratio. So if that is optimal, if we have a, a good ratio there. Um, then we're going to stay healthier longer. Now your starting point, um, as far as mitochondria go, are, are, is predetermined and fixed, but the rate of decay is not. So that can be played with, that can be improved. And oxygen utilization, interestingly enough, leads to better quality of life as well as longer life. So we have to do what we can to increase our utilization of oxygen and make sure the tissue and those mitochondria are getting what they need. Um, if you are sick though, uh, that ratio is decreased and, and thus uh, you get sick. You, you are sick. You stay sick. Uh, this can be reversed with ozone though. Um, so uh, chronically ill patients have decreased NAD and NADH ratios. Ozone however is going to actually help to activate all three levels of energy production. So it actually increases acetal coenzyme A to fuel the Krebs cycle. It increases the function of the Krebs cycle and it increases the function of oxphos, uh, oxidative phosphorylation. Um, so it can it can raise ATP by as much as 40%, which uh, again we breezed over um, but everybody knows ATP is is really what the cell thrives on. That's what it's fuel. Um, Dr. Silver has this to say. He says since decreased oxygen utilization is the primary cause of degenerative disease, the treatment of all diseases, including aging, autoimmune disorders, cancer, ASC, VD, etc., is max maximally enhanced in the presence of optimal oxygen utilization. This is why ozone therapy should be used in virtually every patient. And he's not the only one that thinks this way. There's a number of doctors who have begun to use or have been using ozone therapy for, for a number of years now, and they say the same thing. Uh, they would never go back to um, a clinic without ozone therapy because it delivers so many beneficial uh, results to their patients um, who are suffering with so many different in clinical indications. Um, there's some other effects though, positive effects of ozone therapy. One of them is that it's bactericidal or fungicidal or virucidal. Um, so we can treat infections uh, with it. Um, it. It has a unique immune modulating effect. Um, so it's able to uh, help kickstart an a immune system that's suppressed or help to uh, downregulate an immune system that's overreactive. Um, it's anti-inflammatory, so we can actually help to, again, yeah, oxygenate the tissues and cut inflammation, um, which causes lots of issues. Um, it's an analgesic, so it can be used to deaden pain. It works on the nerve endings to do that. Um, and it helps to detoxify the body. So many things that our bodies really need are provided by uh, ozone therapy and the um, utilization, utilization of oxygen. Um, so let's, let's jump into methods of application. There's probably some terms in here that you won't be necessarily familiar with uh, because they're unique to ozone therapy. Um, I'll do my best to explain them just very briefly. Here we have major autohemotherapy or MAHT um, and this is basically withdrawing small amount of blood. You're going to, in an animal, withdraw about two cc's per 10 pounds and, uh, and then you're going to infuse that with ozone uh, once it's outside of the body um, in a syringe or in a special bag um, that we have. and. And then after the ozone has been absorbed, which happens in milliseconds actually, we're going to just reinfuse that back into the patient. Um, that's one of the uh, most common ways to do uh, ozone therapy. We also have what's known as minor autohemotherapy or MAHT with a small m. <laughs> uh, this is uh, 
basically withdrawing a very small amount of ozone. We're talking maybe a half of a cc for a cat to uh, um, five cc's for a large dog, um, up to 10 cc's for a horse. And we're going to infuse that with ozone. And then we inject that intramuscularly. Now, we're, with this particular one, we're typically uh, looking to induce an immune response. Um, so uh, any immune or autoimmune related issues that are taking place um, would be a, a good candidate for this particular treatment. Uh, next we have uh, ozonated fluids. Now they can be sub-Q as it mentions here or you can use them um, to wash wounds, uh, to lavage, <coughs> those types of things, excuse me. Um, so ozonating fluids is, uh, is a process in and of itself. It's about 10 to 15 minutes to percolate ozone through um, a fluid, whether it be saline or water, and then use that fluid uh, after the fact. Prolozone is a very unique and interesting innovative treatment that's been used a lot. And th that's the one that I mentioned earlier when we were looking at the studies, is used to treat joints. Um, so joint pain or um, sports type injuries or herniated discs or those type degenerative um, diseases, even arthritis um, has uh, benefited uh, a lot from using prolozone, which is a mixture of a, a therapy called prolotherapy and ozone. Um, basically using some uh, vitamins and minerals and uh, homeopathic and ozone to, uh, to treat, uh, inject joints. So that's what we're talking about there. Insufflation, there's a number of ways to insufflate. So basically we're just running ozone gas. Um, you can do this in the ears to treat ear infections. Um, there's rectal uh, ozone insufflation, which is a really fast and easy way to get ozone into the tissue um, through the rectum uh, by using a catheter and a, a syringe. Uh, so very fast, uh, very effective way. Um, vaginal insufflation is another method uh, typically used in humans, uh, not so much on the animal side. Um, then we have ozonated oils, which uh, can be used to treat many, many different skin conditions, and they have some, some different type of creams, actually, that they use for dental uh, procedures as well. Um, so that's another way. And then finally, we have limb bagging. Limb bagging is basically just, uh, uh, and I did mention this earlier as well, um, when we came across that study with that horse that, uh, that had that... Uh, non-healing wound, um, we'll take a bag, a special bag that uh, we make, and we will wrap it, um, put, a, put the limb of the animal uh, inside of that bag um, so that the, uh, the wound is inside of the bag. We'll seal it off, and then we'll run ozone gas right into the bag and let it sit over that wound for a period of uh, 10 to 20 minutes. Um, key word here, versatility. This is an extremely versatile therapy that can be used in a, really a host of different conditions. Um, and, and speaking of conditions or indications, anything from viral or bacterial infections, whether they be systemic or localized um, to respiratory disorders, in, inflammatory conditions, again, we're cutting inflammation, um, Circulatory conditions, improving oxygenation of the blood and the circulation of that of the blood, uh, autoimmune disorders, um, and then even cancer. It's been used as an adjunctive because, again, um, where we're helping fight bacteria and virus, uh, we're helping with oxygenation, um, and uh, so it's it's really uh, stimulating the immune system. Again, right here, uh, Dr. Schellenberger says. Um, ozone stimulates and stabilizes rather than suppressing biological functions. It, ozone itself does not produce the healing effect. Instead, it induces the body's innate healing mechanisms to create the healing effect. Thus, unlike medications and herbs, it can be successfully used in essentially every medical diagnosis condition, regardless of the diagnosis, rather. Um, so again, we have another doctor here saying, you know what, you can really use it on almost everything. 
Uh, here, uh, Marco Roman says O3 UV, which actually isn't just ozone. O3 UV is the use of ozone and ultraviolet therapy, which is another one we do. Um, but uh, this is uh, many of our doctors use ozone therapy and UV therapy together, but uh, you can use them apart and the, you know separately as solo therapies. They work very well. Um, so you could say this of ozone therapy as well. It's a phenomenal way to promote health in our pets naturally because of its ability to inactivate bacteria and virus. While at the same time stimulating the immune system, it is my tool of choice. If your pet has been suffering, you want a healthy pet, I think O3 UV is one of the best ways to get there. I would encourage the vast majority of my patients to consider using this treatment regardless of the illness. Um, so here's just a quick case study. We have a, a dog who came in, um, had a, an eye, a severe eye infection, so much so that they were going to take the eye. Uh, they didn't think that they could save it. Um, you can see that. Uh, the veterinarian decided to use ozonated saline to treat the eye. And so had the dog come in over a number of weeks and treated it using uh, ozonated saline, which they just shot right out of their uh, um, needle. Uh, there and right into the eye. Um, you can see the healing process has begun um, with this particular patient and uh, there's a the finished result. I mean just a fascinating amazing process that resulted in a useful eye that was going to be uh, taken out. Um, here's another case study. We have Olivia here. The A got away from us but uh, um, Olivia was a 12-year-old golden retriever um, and she had lung cancer so they removed one of her lobes um, but guess what cancer returned um, not only that but she was hemorrhaging um, in her chest she had a respiratory distress uh, because of that hemorrhaging um, and was in really really bad shape uh, the traditional vet said uh, well we could do chemo and it will probably give you a few extra days um, if we go that route but we wouldn't recommend that we recommend that you just go ahead and put Olivia down at this point because there's nothing else we can really do for her um, and then uh, we our vet uh, the says uh, that they decided when this patient came to them they wanted to try you know to um, treat Olivia using rectal and subcutaneous ozone, um, biophotonic therapy as well at the same time, which is the UV, ultraviolet blood radiation therapy. Um, so they began treating Olivia using those. Uh, this vet also uses uh, different homeopathics and, and um, always tries to get their patients on a, on a raw diet. Um, so those are some of the changes that were made, um, but really the main treatment protocol had it was ozone and this UV therapy and, and rectal ozone and, and biophotonic therapy weekly. Um, and Olivia lived for another nine happy months of good quality of life. And really at this age, you know, with one lobe removed and the cancer returned and the hemorrhaging and everything else, it was extraordinary that she was able to live this long and her uh, owner was just happy to have this time and be able to say um, goodbye to Olivia who she knew wasn't going to live forever um, but uh, it was pretty incredible. Um, here's another test, quick testimony. This is from Kathy Backus who's out in Utah and she says my dog actually picked it, Valley Fever, up in St. George, Utah. Typical, typical treatment time is 6 to 12 months. Um, on a very expensive antifungal drug. This is why many people give up their animal because they can't afford the treatment for that long and without guarantee it. Some animals and, and people remain on the drug for life. My dog is a Rhodonesian Ridgeback, 92 pounds, and born with one kidney. The antifungal drug is not only expensive but scary to use, in her case, with one kidney. I started her on fluconazole and saw no response and appetite in two weeks. I then purchased and started the ozone therapy and she responded very well clinically. By the second weekly treatment, she was eating again. By two months and seven treatments, she was able to stop fluconazole. So uh, Kathy was pretty amazed um, at uh, the results she got um, using ozone therapy on her, her own dog and now has been using it for a number of years. 
um, quick video here. We have about four minute video just to show you what uh, what some of the vets themselves are saying. So just listen in. As a veterinarian, it's very disappointing to me to see that I'm not making a huge difference in a lot of animals. And with 46% of dogs getting cancer and 39% of cats getting cancer, as a small animal practitioner, I feel often that I'm there are things that we're doing that are not good enough. I was originally a conventional veterinarian, very, very conventional, very, very limited in my paradigms. You spent four years in veterinary school and then you did your internship or your residency. You're committed to a certain type of professional training that you've had and to go on and to start putting your toe into other alternative modality, sometimes people feel like I know what I need to know and I know it's in this box and I feel very secure that's what I know in this box. It's kind of an unknown really in the vet world. Ozone therapy, as I have said many times in my life, is probably the best thing that I have added to my care regimens in my whole career. It's kind of become the foundational tool really. A lot of times it's the reason they're coming to me. Well, I believe that if you're not using ozone, you need to. So I finally decided to do it, and he lived two and a half years after Tufts University said, this horse is dead, dead, there's nothing else you can do for him. You need to euthanize him immediately. And that's how I got into ozone. It's just, I felt sort of like there was no other choice. Euthanasia was my only choice, and that wasn't good enough for me. So why not try something that might help him? And he lived two and a half more years of quality jumping and horse shows and having a great life. Yeah, where I came across it was I was looking for options for my wife who was having a severe respiratory situation and the doctor started throwing out heart-lung transplant and uh, so we started uh, uh, with some ozone and uh, and her, her last, she's gone back to riding horses and done very well and the last time she had a CAT scan her doctor who wanted to put her on steroids, uh, heavy doses of steroids and she would not do that. Uh, looked at her and says, I don't know what you're doing. Uh, and knowing your husband, I probably don't want to know what you're doing. But my suggestion is you continue doing it. And she's back to riding and, and doing much, much improved. When you have inflammation, when you have swelling, when you have bruising, when you have trauma, when you have any kind of an infection or even cancer, you have higher amounts of carbon dioxide that build up in the tissue. And if there's some way to bring down that inflammation of the carbon dioxide, and you can bring down the inflammation, bring down the pain, start the healing cascade, encourage mitochondria to start functioning more efficiently inside the cell, you can actually have cells start to heal. And what is the most important nutrient that you need to give to cells is oxygen. And there's no easier way to, to oxygenate the, the patient than, uh, than ozone. Another great case we just had was a mare that had a uterine infection uh, for over two years, um, I happen to know it's my mare, and, uh, and very aggressive therapy. Um, you know, of course, her last foal is a horse of the year, world champion now, and um, and finally this year we started uh, lavaging her with ozonated saline, and we've delivered two embryos so far this year. Hmm. So. Uh, the first time that's happened in two years with this mare, or fighting uh, chronic uh, endometritis. There's a lot of modalities out there and we can't have all of them, but I feel that ozone is one of the most basic because what do animals need? They need hydration. We all have IV fluids, sub-Q fluids. Nobody would not have that. And the same thing, oxygen. I find that ozone is the cornerstone. It is the, it is the common denominator that improves outcomes more than anything else I do. From a number of our ozone veterinarians uh, there. And uh, yeah, so I thought, uh, you know, that would be a beneficial way to, to allow you to understand a little bit better, um, you know, that what a uh, what uh, other vets are saying about it. Um, so uh, moving on from there though, what do you need? Because uh, I'm sure some of you have that question. What exactly is needed to start uh, doing ozone therapy? Um, 
And the first thing <laughs> is going to be a generator. Um, an ozone generator. There's various uh, generators available on the market. Um, we have a very um, good, uh, precise uh, medical ozone generator available for a very reasonable cost. Um, uh, you'll need oxygen. Um, so pure medical oxygen is used to produce uh, what we call medical ozone. And you'll need a, an oxygen regulator to reduce the, the speed of flow from the uh, oxygen tank to the uh, ozone generator. Um, and then really, once you've got those things, uh, you can begin uh, doing ozone therapy. There's some accessories you can include uh, if you're going to ozonate uh, um, things like fluids or um, yeah, saline and water. Then you'll need a colander, like you'll see it. You see on the right side of that picture. Um, there's things like rectal catheters, uh, ozone tubing, some ozone bags, and things. Um, different accessories that can be used. Um, well, regardless of what you use or what generator you get, you want to make sure that you're using ozone compatible um, materials because ozone is very caustic. It'll uh, very quickly eat away at the wrong types of materials. Um, so that's a, a danger that you must be aware of. Um, also, you're, you're going to need some customer support, um, which is why I think uh, we add a lot of value for veterinarians uh, with O3 Vets because uh, we can provide that, whereas uh, um, other, other companies can't. They just can't because they don't have any experience in the veterinary world. Um, we are the only company that is uh, able to do that at this point. Um, so that's an important uh, consideration, I think, when you're purchasing ozone equipment. <clears throat> uh, just real quick here, some of the features of the Falcon O3, which is our ozone machine, uh, are that you actually get real-time concentration levels. So when we're doing medical ozone procedures, we want to know that the ozone we're using is not only pure ozone, but we want to know precisely what concentration level we're using um, to treat the animal. And with our device, it's one of a few, a handful, um, that actually gives you real-time concentration levels um, with a built-in uh, meter. Um, it's fully digital. Uh, there's a built-in regulator. It's universal voltage. It's got a built-in destruct to get rid of unwanted ozone. And then it's, of course, made with 100% ozone-compatible parts. So uh, there's a lot of, uh, I think, benefits to using a machine like this. Um, another machine we have, this is really a, uh, a home-use type of unit for those of you who are uh, considering doing ozone therapy at home by yourself. It's possible. Um, let me just say that. Um, but... Uh, even for veterinarians, we uh, we recommend, hey, you know, this is another value-added option for you to to offer to your clients as a, a machine that they can either rent from you or purchase and then use at home and not have to come in for ozone treatments, especially if they're doing rectal ozone treatments. So that's something you can do every day at home for, for a period of three weeks or so. Uh, before taking some time off, so you know you're not going to come in and do that every, at the clinic. Um, the hummingbird is a high high quality but in a very inexpensive um, home use kit, and it's it's really perfect for daily rectal ozone treatments um, out of the comfort and convenience of your home. Um, we're actually nearing the end here now, uh, and uh, <clears throat> I want to just encourage you. We have training classes available. Um, we've got one coming up here in uh, September, beginning of September. September 8th, I believe, is the date. Um, it's a Friday. It's the Friday before the AHVMA conference, which is in Columbus, Ohio this year. Um, and you can go to our website, www.o3vets.com, to find out more about that class. You can also go there and sign up for a newsletter right on the home page. There's a button to do that. And uh, finally, we, ha we actually partner with SOPMED, the Society of uh, Progressive Medical Education, um, to put on a yearly conference. And this next one is actually going to take place in Dallas. Um, it's in June. 
uh, towards the end of June this year, I believe. Um, we'll have more information available on that here shortly. Um, so make sure um, to, to write to us and let us know that you're interested in that. Or just sign up for a newsletter and we'll get you information on it. Um, I told you you were going to get a coupon, a discount. So uh, here, through t just through tomorrow, um, we're going to give you a 50% dis discount on Ozonia Vet, which is an ozone-based cream that can be used uh, for um, skin conditions. Um, so take a look at that. Uh, you can use the code 50% off uh, that you see at the bottom of the screen and get that uh, discount and uh, again it's only good through tomorrow so you'll have to use that quickly if you want to use it. Um, that is it. Uh, I think uh, we're out of time uh, as well so um, if you do have questions uh, I would ask for you to um, email those to me at info at o3vets.com and uh, we also have a forum on our website where you can enter any questions you have and try to get an answer from the ozone community at large. Um, so we'd be happy to help you in, in those ways. But thank you for participating. And uh, we look forward to seeing you hopefully at our next um, webinar, uh, which will be probably about a month from now. All right. Thank you very much and uh, have a good evening.